Hey guys. This is Space Train, your daily express till the edge of the space. And today we will talk about, what is the shape of space? Grab your tickets and let's go. <laughs> Our train will explore the whole universe to find answers to some important questions. So make sure you have subscribed to get unlimited pass on our expedition. The shape of space The curvature of space is not the only thing we have deep questions about when it comes to the nature of space. Once you accept that space is not an infinite void but rather a maybe infinite physical thing with properties, you can ask all kinds of strange questions about it. For example, what is the size and shape of space? The size and shape of space tell us how much space there is and how it is connected to itself. You might think that since space is flat, and not shaped like a potato or a horse saddle, or a potato on a horse saddle, the idea of the size and shape of space makes no sense. After all, if space is flat, it means that it must go on forever, right? Not necessarily. Space can be flat and infinite. Or it could be flat and have an edge to it. Or, even stranger, it could be flat and still loop around itself. How can space have an edge? Actually, there's no reason why space can't have a boundary even if it is flat. For example, a disk is a flat two-dimensional surface with a smooth continuous edge. Perhaps three-dimensional space also has a boundary at some point thanks to some strange geometric property at its edges. Even more intriguing is the possibility that space can be flat and still loop around itself. It would be like playing one of those video games, like Asteroids or Pac-Man, where if you move beyond the edge of the screen you simply appear on the other side space might be able to connect with itself in some way that we are not completely aware of yet. For example, wormholes are theoretical predictions of general relativity. In a wormhole, two different points in space that are far apart can be connected to each other. What if the edges of space are all connected together in a similar way? We have no idea. Quantum space finally, you can ask whether space is actually made up of tiny discrete bits of space like the pixels on a TV screen, or are infinitely smooth, such that there are an infinite number of places you can be between two points in space. Scientists in ancient times might not have imagined that air is made up of tiny discrete molecules. After all, air appears to be continuous. It acts to fill any volume and it has interesting dynamical properties, like wind and weather. Yet we know that all these things we love about air, how it brushes gently against your cheek in a cool summer breeze or how it keeps us from asphyxiating, are actually the combined behavior of billions of individual air molecules, not the fundamental properties of the individual molecules themselves. The smooth space scenario would appear to make more sense to us. After all, our experience of moving through space is that we glide through it in an easy, continuous way. We don't jump from pixel to pixel in a jerky fashion the way a video game character does when it moves across the screen. Or do we? Given our current understanding of the universe, it would actually be more surprising if space turned out to be infinitely smooth. That's because we know that everything else is quantized. Matter is quantized, energy is quantized, forces are quantized, Girl Scout cookies are quantized. Moreover, Quantum physics suggests that there might be a smallest distance that even makes sense, which is about 10 minus 35 meters.7 so from a quantum mechanical perspective, it would make sense if space was quantized. But, again, we really have no idea. But having no idea hasn't stopped physicists from imagining crazy possibilities. If space is quantized. That means that when we move across space we are actually jumping from small little locations to other small little locations. In this view, space is a network of connected nodes, like the stations in a subway system. Each node represents a location, and the connections between nodes represent the relationships between these locations, that is, which one is next to which other one. This is different from the idea that space is just the relationship between matter, because these nodes of space can be empty and still exist. Interestingly enough, these nodes would not need to sit inside a larger space or framework. They could just be. In this scenario, 
what we call space would just be the relationships between the nodes, and all the particles in the universe would just be properties of this space rather than elements in it. For example, they might be vibrational modes of these nodes. This is not as far-fetched as it sounds. The current theory of particles is based on quantum fields that fill all of space. A field just means there is a number, or value, associated with every point in that space. In this view, particles are just excited states of these fields. So we are not too far from this kind of theory already. By the way, physicists love this type of idea, where something that seems fundamental to us, like space, comes out accidentally from something deeper. It gives them the sense that we have peeked behind the curtain to discover a deeper layer of reality. Some even suspect that the relationships between nodes of space are formed by the quantum entanglement of particles, but this is mathematical speculation by a bunch of over-caffeinated theorists. The mysteries of space if you have listened so far and either understood it deeply or just turned your nonsense alarm to mute, then we should not hesitate to explore the craziest concepts about space. Yes, it gets crazier. If space is a physical thing, not a backdrop or frame, with dynamic properties such as twists and ripples, perhaps even built out of quantized bits of space, then we have to wonder, what else can space do? Like air, perhaps it has different states and phases. Under extreme conditions, maybe it can arrange itself in very unexpected ways or have weird unexpected properties in the same way that air behaves differently whether it's in liquid, gas, or solid form. Perhaps the space we know and love and occupy, sometimes more than we'd like, is only one rare type of space and there are other types of space out there in the universe just waiting for us to figure out how to create and manipulate them. The most intriguing tool we have to answer this question is the fact that space is distorted by mass and energy. In order to understand what space is and what it can do, our best bet is to push it to extremes by looking carefully at places where cosmically huge masses are squeezing and straining it black holes. If we could explore near black holes, we might see space shredded and chopped in ways that cause our nonsense alarms to explode. And the exciting thing is that we are closer than ever to being able to probe these extreme deformations of space. Whereas before we were deaf to the ripples of gravitational waves moving through the universe, we now have the ability to listen into the cosmic events that are shaking and disturbing the goo of space. Perhaps in the near future we will understand more about the exact nature of space and get at these deep questions that are literally all around us. So don't space out. And save some space in your brain for the answers. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, subscribe and click the bell button, to get notifications on our latest videos. If you are still here, grab your knowledge and get out of my train.